In this lecture, I'll be talking about Docker command line interface, or otherwise called as Docker CLI. The Docker CLI is the primary user interface for interacting with Docker. It allows the user to run commands to create, manage, and interact with Docker containers and images. All these days, we have been using Docker Desktop to download the image and also to spin up the container. But we can do all these operations right from the Docker CLI itself. And in fact, while we use the Docker in the CI CD pipeline, we can't really use the Docker desktop. We should be using command line interface. And that's what this Docker CLI is. That's why Docker CLI is the primary user interface for interacting with Docker. Docker CLI will let you interact with Docker D or Docker daemon over REST API to get the command or the request get completed. So basically, Docker CLI interacts with Docker daemon. And this Docker daemon is kind of new if you are hearing this. Well, I will be talking about that in the architecture even further, but Docker daemon just consider this as a service which sits between Docker CLI command and the Docker engine or the rest of the operation to perform the command that you're gonna be passing in from the Docker CLI. Again, all these interactions are gonna happen from the Docker CLI via the REST API. And the API the default path to listen is the slash var slash run slash docker dot sock. Well, as I said, in a nutshell, this is how the diagrammatic view of the things are going to look like. So you're going to be performing any operation from the Docker CLI. It's going to send a REST request to the Docker daemon and Docker daemon is going to do all the magics for you behind the scene. And then it's going to bring up all the containers that you're looking for. And now you may be wondering, what are the different commands that the Docker really support? I mean, Docker has got so many different commands, but I'm going to just show you some of the basic command for you to interact with the Docker right now. For instance, if you're going to be pulling an image like how we did from the Docker desktop for an Nginx image, you can just use the command docker pull and the image name, which is nothing but the Nginx in here. And then you can specify the versions or whatever that you want to do by using the tag, which we'll be talking about while we do it. But this is what is the command to pull an image from the Docker Hub. Similarly, if you want to see what are the images is already downloaded within your system, you can just use the docker images command. And if you want to remove an image, you can just do docker rmi to remove all the images from your docker. And similarly, if you're going to see the running containers, then you can just do docker ps to get the list of running containers. If you wanted to see all the containers, then you can just specify ps-a to list all the containers, which includes the stopped containers as well. And you can stop the container using docker stop and the container ID or the name. You can remove the stopped container by using the container ID or name with command docker rm. And similarly, if you want to see the logs of the container, like how we saw visually from the Docker desktop, you can just do docker logs to get the logs of the container. I'll quickly show you how these commands can be executed using the Docker CLI. And once again, Docker CLI will be installed for you automatically once you install a Docker desktop within your machine. So now I'm just going to open my Windows terminal or any terminal of your choice. You can use PowerShell or Windows terminal or even command prompt, it just works fine without any problem. Similarly, if you're going to be executing the same in the Mac operating system or Linux operating system, you can just use your default bash terminal or Z's terminal to do that same operation. I'm just going to open the Windows terminal. And now over here, I can just type the command docker. And if I just say images, it is going to show me all the images which is running within my machine. And you can see that if there is no Docker engine up and running, then this Docker images command, which is going to send an API request to the Docker daemon, will see if the Docker engine is up and running. You can see that the Docker desktop Linux engine is currently shut down in my machine. And that's the reason why this particular error is coming up. So now if I open the Docker desktop, you will notice that the Docker engine is going to start along with the Docker desktop. And you see that the starting Docker engine is coming up. And we have got our already existing container, which is currently in the exited status. And we have this image Nginx over here. So we'll see if we get the same image listed over here. So if I just say Docker images, you should see that we have got this image Nginx and the tag is latest and there is the image ID and it is created like three weeks ago and the size is 188 MB. Similarly, if I want to pull any image, I can just use the command docker pull and the image name. So if you know already the image name, you can just pull the image directly over here. 
So let's say if I just go on to the hub.docker.com under the hub, you can just search for any of the emails that you are interested in. For instance, if I'm going to search for Selenium for that matter, then you should see that it says Selenium standalone Chrome or Selenium hub coming up for me automatically. So I can just go ahead and click the Selenium hub and you should see there is a Selenium hub and you can see that there is a command to pull the Selenium hub using the docker pull Selenium slash hub. I can just copy this entire command and if I go to my terminal, remove the docker pull which I already typed and then if I paste it and if I hit enter, you should see that it is going to automatically pull the latest tagged Selenium hub image for me. And once again, you can see all the different tags of the Selenium hub from this tags tab. And you should see that there are so many different tags available, which is going to be specified with the colon and then the tag name as nightly. By default, it is going to be latest as you can see over here, like colon latest. If you don't specify the latest at all, it's going to automatically going to pull the latest for you. But if you're going to specify any version, then you can just specify the version something like this, and it is going to pull that exact image for you. So right now, let me try to pull this particular image and we'll see what is going to happen. So you can see that using the default tag as latest and it is pulling that image for you. And you'll also notice that it's going to be pulling a layers of images over here on that particular image. So it is kind of doing something behind the scene. And I will talk about them once we get there. But for now, you can see that it's all been pulled up. And you should also see that this particular image has got a SHA-256 encryption key, which is going to be ending with 9ED9. So if you just go over here in the Selenium Docker image, and if I hit the latest, you should see that the index digest is going to be the SHA-256 ending with 9ED9. So you can match with this particular key is the one that is downloaded within your machine. So now that that is another new image for me in this particular machine. If I try to do and Docker images this time, you should see I have got two images coming up for me. And these are all coming from the Docker hub. And this CLI is working pretty much exactly how it used to work with a Docker desktop, as you can see over here. So you can see that we have got Selenium Hub and the Nginx image. Now, if I want to remove an image, I can just do a Docker RMI and then the image ID, something like this. So I can just copy this, paste it over here. And if I hit it, you will see that the image is gone or it is deleted. So if I just do a Docker images, you don't see the Selenium Hub listed over here because it's completely deleted for us from here. The next up is going to be the containers, which is up and running as well. So if I just do a Docker PS, it is going to show me all the running containers. But currently, all the containers in our Docker are not up and running, right? Like it's all down and no containers are running. So if I want to see even the stopped containers, I can just do a Docker PS hyphen A, and it's going to show me an exited container in the Docker over here. It's also showing me some more detail like when it was created and what is the exited status like six minutes ago and the port number and the host port mapped to the containers port AD with the protocol as TCP and the name of this particular container. So if I want to start this particular Docker container, I can even just do Docker start and the container name, which could be the starting of this value or the ending of this value, you can specify whatever that you wanted to. So if I just say 1D F F and if I hit enter, you will notice that the container has started. And if you just go to the Docker desktop, you should see that this particular container is up and running. So this is the way that you can specify the Docker container ID. You can either specify the full name if you wanted to, or you can also specify the partial name from any of these because it's more like a contains. That's how it works. So now that we have a container running and if I just do a Docker PS, you should notice that we have got a Docker container up and running and the status is like up with 45 seconds over here. Let me clear the screen just in case for the clarity purpose. And if I just do a Docker logs of the container name, then I will also see the logs of the running container. So let's say if I want to see the Docker PS hyphen A, 
to see the container over here, which is this one, 1DFF. So if I just do Docker logs of the 1DFF, remember we used to see the logs from the Docker desktop by going to the logs, something like this. We can do the exact same thing over here as well. So this logs is going to come up, which was there before, as we saw from our last lecture. And similarly, if I want to do an inspect of this particular Docker container, then I can just do docker inspect of 1DFF and we could able to get the details of this particular running container. So these are the ways we can actually see how we can run the Docker CLI to get the information of whatever that we have did until our earlier lecture from the Docker desktop from within the Docker CLI itself. Now next lecture, we will talk about the Docker architecture even further so that we can get some more detail and deep understanding of Docker. And following that, we'll start working with some of the most important concepts of Docker, like Docker networking, Docker volumes, Docker compose, Docker build, and more.